Hi, I'm Shelley Tugas, Director of the Hudson Area Public Library, and I'm here today with our River Channel segment, Books Are Just the Beginning. I have Sarah O'Brien with us. She's a youth services librarian and our storytime rock star, for sure. And we're going to talk a little bit about early literacy and the Thousand Books Before Kindergarten program. Um, and Sarah, that program is done at libraries all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of put our own unique spin on it. And I think for most libraries, it was sort of decimated after the pandemic. And then we had a natural disaster on top of that. So um, I would essentially say our program was dead mm -hmm. and you have revitalized it. So let's uh, talk a little bit about um, what it is, how it works, and um, how many people we have involved in it right now. Great, well, thank you, Shelley. Um, a Thousand Books Before Kindergarten is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote reading to infants and toddlers and encourage adults and children um, to bond through reading. Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, it's at many, many libraries, including libraries all around us. Um, and when I started up here, I asked if we had had that program because my kids had gone through it in Iowa and um, and people said, yeah, but we didn't really know much about it. It was a yeah, but answer for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so, um, but then we re-kicked it off after the pandemic and shortly before, or not, I think it was after the storm as yes, well. Yes, after the storm. Yes, and um, in that time we've had over 500 people sign up for the program and mm -hmm. go through it, and over 100 have completed the program. Um, in a couple of years, many go through it multiple times. Mm -hmm. They just love it. And the way we set up our program here is that you sign up. Yeah, show us the um, packet here. We have a folder here. Um, and the people that are signing up just need to fill out six lines of information. And we don't collect a lot of information. All we want to know, know is how to contact them when they, um, <clears throat> when they finish or if we have questions along the way, if somebody left their sheet here or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, and then in it, we send home a tracking sheet. Um, we have a different one for each hundred. Mm -hmm. Every time... Um, and when the kids sign up for the program, they get to pick a tracking animal. We have many to choose from. Mm -hmm. I just chose the panda. Um, but we have many to choose from. We write their name on it, and they put it at the start. Then when they complete their 100-book sheet, um, they bring it in, and... Uh, they get to pick a prize and move their tracking animal around the library. Mm -hmm. We wanted it to be very visible, so people are always asking, what are these animals? I yes. want to do that. Um, and they see kids picking prizes, and kids want to do that too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's been a great program. The families really enjoy it. And it's amazing what incentivizes kids like the, mm -hmm. to pick their animal off 100 and move it to 200. It's It reminds me of the elevator pushing like the things that excite kids about the mm -hmm. library. And that's, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. So, and we will cover like how easy this is um, in a bit, but I wanted to chat a little bit about um, just early literacy in general mm -hmm. and the whole concept of you have um, your newborn baby and that talk, sing, play, read, those four things, and snuggle, as I would say, I would add snuggle. Um, and I think the best analogy I've ever read is you think of the brain as we're born with the trunk. And all the reading, um, singing, talking builds the branches and the branches on the branches and the branches on the branches on the branches. And so all of that engagement is so critical because by age three, about 80% of your brain is already developed, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean you can't continue to build those connections as you grow older. It's just that the earlier you have the building blocks, the easier it is for your kid to move into school and other situations like that. Mm -hmm. So what else would you add to my very long, what was supposed to be a summary? Um, 
Well, not only does being read to at a young age help kids develop a love for reading, it also adds to their vocabulary yeah. yes. and they, they absorb the information and they learn to form sentences and mm -hmm. words effectively. So reading to them does not only help them read later, it helps them communicate and learn the world around them. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I'll just share as a new parent, um, when I brought my daughter home from the hospital, and I think a lot of parents are, you know, they read all the books about preparing to be a parent, and then they actually send you home with that baby. And um, I was sitting in a rocking chair. Uh, my husband and um, stepdaughter had left to get food, and it was just me and me and this baby. And I'm like, okay, well, now what? And all of her board books, big stack, were over there. And I was too afraid to get out of the chair and walk with her. So there was a Time magazine next to me, mm -hmm. and I picked it up and I just started reading to her because, you know, I had that initial mom panic. Mm -hmm. um, initial mom panic, imp is what we call it, right? And, but that was the natural go to for me because I was in education at the time mm -hmm. and it felt right. And from that moment on, we did read. Even when she was super, super little, we would read. Um, and I think a lot of parents can relate to that first moment of your first child. Mm -hmm. I know when, when my first were born, um, I was given several Sandra Boynton board books, which have become my favorite. I had not heard of Sandra Boynton before that, but um, we read those over and over and over. And I know that when we would go on long, long car rides, because my parents lived four hours away, mm -hmm. uh, my kids would cry in the back seat. And if I would just repeat those Sandra Boynton board books, which we've read so many times, we knew them by heart, they would stop crying. So I can remember reading them all the way to grandma's. Yes, for and you a long went time. through what I went through double because you had twins. Right, yes. right. Yes, yes. Well, that's, yes, that's an amazing technique, and you had to have lost your voice by the time you got to <laughs> your parents' house. Yeah, so repetition is a huge part of what kids want and love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me do uh, a speed round with you about a thousand books. Um, that's a lot of books. Are you serious? It does sound like a lot of books, but if you think about it, kids love to read and they will say more, more, mm -hmm. more. We hear that all the time. Or again, as my... <laughs> yes, yes. And so when you sit down and you read five books at a time and board books, if you're starting when they're little, board books don't take that long. Right. And if you read the same five or the same board book five times, it counts five times. Um, and we all and, know you skip pages when you can. Right, right. <laughs> yep, so whatever works for the baby works for us or works mm -hmm. for the child. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not nitpicky with the program. You know, some people will see this tracking sheet and think, oh my goodness, I can't write that down. And I tell parents, it's not a big deal. If you wrote, read two books today, put the date and then put quotation marks under it. Or if you read 20 books, put a line one through 20 mm -hmm. and write the date or put mm -hmm. five at nap time or however you want to do it. I give these back at the end. Yes. So if you want it as a keepsake so that you can see, we read Brown Bear, Brown Bear 672 times, <laughs> um, which is very possible yes. with many children, um, then, then you can keep this at the end. Yes, it's not going to the Department of Public Instruction at the state. Right. That the thousand bucks before kindergarten program will never see it either. It's just between the family and between us, and we don't look at them. We just, you know, are doing it for them. Another thing that I tell families: um, as your children get older, mm -hmm. let them fill it out for writing practice. Mm -hmm. The kids love that. We can't read it, but it'll be a great keepsake as well. Yes. yes. So. Okay. So the babysitter said she read four books. Mm -hmm. Then write down four books from the babysitter okay. or just four books. You don't have to, you don't have to write down the title if you want to, mm -hmm. that's great. But if you don't, that's fine. You can, grandma and grandpa can read over the phone or over a video call. Um, if they go to preschool, 
if they can um, say that the teacher read three books today, mm -hmm. write them down, books at school. Mm -hmm. So we're exposed to so many books in a day that we don't even realize. But if you think about it, a thousand books, even if you just read one book a day, mm -hmm. you could be done in um, three years. Three years, yeah. yeah. Okay, so my very active toddler, I get through half a book and he's off my lap. That's fine. Still write the book down. You read it, you spent time. If you want to come back and read it later, as sometimes very active toddlers are taking it with them too. Mm -hmm. and, and they're repeating the words over and over or mm -hmm. they're just finishing the book on their own. Mm -hmm. That's okay too. Yeah. I know my daughter would somersault like during reading and then I'd stop and ask her about the story and she could tell me what I had been reading. So mm -hmm. some kids just process through movement. Right. Well, and I tell parents at story time, too, because some parents will get really flustered if their kids aren't participating or if they're moving around. And I remember with my own children taking them places, sometimes they never, ever participated. But at home, they were doing the whole thing. They yeah. had it all memorized. So kids all learn in their own way, and that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so really, literally, if I read the same Bob the Builder book 100 times, I can count it. 100 times. You certainly can. You can read Bob the Builder 1,000 times. Okay. Oh, please no. <laughs> but, um, and then um, once you complete the program, what um, happens? When you, we're, we're doing some cool stuff. Yeah. When you complete that program, um, they come in with their last sheet. They turn it in. They pick out their last prize, and we announce them over the loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. um, and then everyone in the library shouts, hooray. It's yes. so fun. Uh, I know last week I was in story time when um, a child came in, and all of us in the story time room were like, hip, hip, hooray. So we were so excited mm -hmm. for Stanley, the kid that read, finished his thousand books. That's amazing. So, um, and then after that, the folder comes back to me so they don't get it back right away. Mm -hmm. When I have several um, together, then you and I schedule a party. Mm -hmm. And at the party, they will get a completion certificate. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then signed by you. Yes. <laughs> and then we always give them a book and we have treats. And then, of course, the Well, favorite, and they get to invite their family to the party. They get to invite their family to the party, yes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we've had, we've had guest speakers at the party. But the part I think most kids look forward to, yes. we always have it, have part of the party before or after the library is open. Mm -hmm. And so that we can play hide and seek in the library. Yes. Yes, I have crawled under desks and hid behind doors and squatted in positions my body really hasn't enjoyed, yep. but it is so worth it because the kids absolutely love this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they can bring mom and dad and siblings or guardians, grandpa, mm -hmm. um, whoever they want. Yep, which brings up another point. We have many people that come into the library that are um, grandparents yes. or nannies <clears throat> or family friends that um, that bring the kid to the library the majority of the time that mm -hmm. the child comes to the library and they've asked if they can sign them up and I'm just fine with it I said uh, I usually tell them the contact information on here can be yours or it can be the parents whichever um, I just need someone to get in contact with who can bring the child to the party. Mm -hmm. And so it might be that the neighbors bring the child to the library all the time and do all the reading and finish it, and then mom and dad bring them to the party, or maybe mm -hmm. mom and dad and the neighbors come to the party. Yeah. So. so it sounds like ease and flexibility, no bureaucracy. Right, right. Well, and that's the other thing. The program is called A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten but we want kids to love it. Mm -hmm. And so I tell families, a thousand bucks before you finish kindergarten, because sometimes they're just like, oh, I've had them come in and they're like, we made it to 800, but now kindergarten's starting. And I'm like, just keep going. You don't have to quit. If you finish those 200 before the end of the year, school year, well, mm -hmm. we, we want you to, yeah. so we support you. So we think about the library a lot as having because some kids come here and they just love to read. It just 
happened for them naturally. Other kids are like, oh, I don't really like books, Mom. You know, like their siblings. So we see that um, the library, the toys, the games, the activities are an entrance ramp to falling in love with the library, which leads to falling in love with books, and eventually you become a reader of some sort. Mm -hmm. Maybe not reading a book a week all your life, um, or taking beach books to your vacation, but that everybody can find a place in their life for reading. Right. Well, and people um, of all ages like to look at things, mm -hmm. and I love how our board book area has uh, toys in it. So kids start with the toys, but then they pull out the book. And yeah. even if it's not listening to the words, if they don't have the ability to sit and listen, um, if they don't have that attention span, they still are soaking up the pictures. And I know some some kids um, get more from the pictures oh, than from sure. the words. And our brains all work differently. And so we want to make sure that we're catering to all the types of brains and how they how they all work you know as adults um and, and teens and and adolescents and everybody some people really prefer the graphic novels mm -hmm. and and that's just like pulling out a board book and just looking at the pictures and um not necessarily knowing the words but you get a story from the pictures right right fantastic well i hope people will share the word about a thousand books sign up for a thousand books and, um, you know, I think some of the adults are as excited about hide and seek in the library as some <laughs> of the kids. So we would love to see you here for that and all of our other great programs. Thanks so much.